when it was allowed to send children by mail. Today on Echoes Through Time Channel, the mail allows us to send everything from simple letters to bulky objects, regulated only by laws prohibiting the shipment of dangerous or perishable materials. However, just over a century ago, the U.S. Postal Service lacked specific rules about the contents of packages, leading to a practice as unusual as it was surprising, sending children by mail. In 1913, as the Postal Service modernized and expanded its boundaries, some American families took advantage of this legal loophole to send their children to visit relatives in a way that was both peculiar and economical. In 1913, the United States was in the midst of modernizing its postal system, driven by the growing demand for more efficient and accessible services. The newly created U.S. Postal Service introduced parcel service, designed to facilitate the shipment of larger and heavier items across the country. However, in this initial phase, the regulations were scarcely detailed and focused primarily on basic logistical aspects. The most significant regulation stipulated that packages should not exceed 5 kilograms in weight and established a minimum shipping cost, but did not mention specific restrictions on the contents, opening the door to unexpected and creative uses of the postal system, including sending small children, as long as their weight was within the permissible limits. This lack of specificity in the regulations marked a fascinating and unconventional period in the nation's postal history. One of the most notorious cases of children sent by mail occurred in Ohio, where Jesse and Matilda Beagle decided to send their eight-month-old son James to his grandmother's house in Batavia. Little James, weighing less than the five-kilogram limit, was packaged and labeled at a cost of only 15 cents, plus $50 in insurance. The mailman, responsible for this peculiar delivery, transported the child safely to his grandmother's home marking one of the first documented uses of this practice. Another famous case is that of Charlotte May Piersdorf, who at just five years old in 1914, was sent by mail via a freight train to her grandparents' house in Idaho. Charlotte's trip, which cost 53 cents in stamps affixed to her coat, later inspired a children's book. Although her destination was not very far, the idea of sending a girl by mail captured the public's imagination and highlighted the flexibility of the postal regulations of the time. The National Postal Museum has documented several similar stories, where children were sent by mail in special circumstances, taking advantage of the trust in local mail carriers and insufficient legal restrictions. These anecdotes, often seen as charming and curious, reflect an era where the limits of the postal system were tested in ways unimaginable today. The practice of sending children by mail in the United States in the early 20th century generated a mix of astonishment and concern among the public and the media. Although in many cases the stories were reported with a tone of curiosity and amusement, they also sparked debates about the safety and ethics of such a practice. Newspapers of the time frequently covered these stories, further popularizing the idea, though not without criticism. Trust in mail carriers played a crucial role in this unconventional practice. In small and rural communities, where everyone knew the local mail carrier, parents felt comfortable in trusting their children to these postal workers to send them to visit nearby relatives. This familiarity allowed parents to use a postal service that was then seen as a reliable and safe extension of the community itself. As the practice of sending children by mail gained attention and notoriety, the U.S. government began to realize the safety and ethical implications it entailed. Although the stories were initially received with a mix of humor and surprise, they soon became a cause for concern for legislators, and the general public. The Postmaster General of the United States Postal Service quickly intervened upon realizing that postal law lacked clarity regarding human shipments. In 1915, 
the government acted to close this unusual legal loophole, implementing stricter regulations that explicitly prohibited the mailing of people, including children, through the Postal Service. This measure aimed to ensure safety and protect the welfare of the most vulnerable, ending one of the most unusual and debated practices in the country's postal history. The story of sending children by mail illustrates the curious and mutable nature of social and legal practices. What was once a practical and accepted solution now seems completely inconceivable, reflecting how our norms and values evolve over time. Don't forget to subscribe.